So let's talk about kin effects, rigging in SOPs. This was added in Houdini 18.5 and it's been just an absolute game changer for me. I now am able to do all of my character animation pretty much in SOPs as well as you know, go straight into all of my character effects and kind of everything else that I want to do in Houdini. I'm able to keep most of my workflow in Houdini most of the time, which is great. It's really nice to be able to do so many things in one app and not have to leave it at all and have sort of the latency of switching between different programs to do different parts of my workflow. I'm just doing 90% of things in Houdini now, which is, which is so liberating. Let's just start making a rig right off the bat. We'll, uh, start at the end of this stream where we have our character coming out. Um, and the first thing that we need to start rigging for kin effects to do a quick and dirty kin effects rig is the skeleton sop. So I'll plug that in here. It's giving us this little error. We can just ignore this. Sometimes we still get errors with kin effects because it's a relatively new thing. I will uh, template our character right here. So now I think I need to just hit the enter key and it gives me this little circle over my cursor and I can just start drawing bones. So I'm gonna to wanna to start first with the hip bone, which I'll put down here. It's gonna be sort of the root of my entire thing. Um, and I'll put it right here. And then uh, from there, let's do the left leg. So I'll go over here. This is the top of the leg, the knee, the bottom of the foot, and then the sort of end of the foot and then the toes over here. And uh, the, the skeleton sop is really good at sort of figuring out where this stuff goes if you have um, your model templated and stuff over here. So that's super, super nice. Um, so great, I have this stuff set up. I can go also into here and I can say, this is gonna be my hip. Uh, this is going to be my um, leg underscore L. Uh, and it's, it's really good and, and important to name your bones. I don't always do it, but I, I try to do it as much as possible. Um, and I'll call it uh, knee L, and then I'll call it foot L, and I'll call it uh, foot tip L um, and I'll take this and I'll call it toes L. Great, so we have that set up. Um, now let's go a little bit further and we will set up some of the spine and, and the spine on this character is gonna be weird because it's very basic. Um, I'll go up here to do sort of like a clavicle. Um, I'll call it Lav uh, L, um, do that there, call it shoulder L, uh, and then elbow, elbow underscore L, and then hand, hand L, and then um, this is, I don't really know which finger that should be. I guess that's technically the thumb. So I'll call this thumb L. A little bit of a tedious process, but that's okay. Um, then thumb tip L. Uh, and then I'll call this index L. And this is gonna be so basic because, uh, because I'm not really gonna be moving these fingers much. This is, this is a very simple character, but you could definitely go more in depth here. Um, and I will call this third finger L, third finger tip L, Pinky, L, and pinky tip L. Great. 
So we got that all set up. Um, then we we didn't name this is the this is the chest. Um, and then uh, we're we're pretty close now. We can probably do um, this up here can be like the head. We'll call this head. And then maybe we'll just do one up here for uh, head tip. Um, and that's pretty much good for now. Um, we could certainly add more stuff for the mouth and stuff. Actually, why don't, why don't we just do that just for good measure? It doesn't hurt to have more bones in there. So I will um, pull out from here and I will do this one called uh, jaw. We'll do another one here and I'll call this jaw two. And then I'll call this mouth bot. Great. It's not perfectly aligned, um, but that's okay. I can select one of these and go into tweak mode and move it around. And you can see one issue doing this is that it's moving the children too. But if I check off child compensate, then I don't have to worry about that. And now I have um, kind of an okay placed uh, jaw bone and stuff. And this is definitely good enough for, for what we want. So great, we now have a little over half of our skeleton. And you may wonder, okay, well now do you have to redo all these joints and stuff and rename all of them for the left side um, or the right side? And the answer is no. And that's you know one of the beautiful parts of this procedural setup as well as um, the way that we named everything. So let's go ahead and drop a skeleton mirror. Very handy node. So this will by default mirror the entire skeleton. And what we want to do is have it uh, find tokens at the end with underscore L and replace it with underscore R. Um, and then the joints that we want this to work on, I should create a group probably. Um, so I'll make a point group and I'll call this left side. Um, uh, left side and I will select all the joints that are on the left side and then in the skeleton mirror I will set that to just use the left side group and now we are only getting these duplicated and they're getting renamed with underscore R which is really great and handy um, and awesome so cool now we actually have a decent little skeleton here, full skeleton. So now that we have this, there's a few other um, handy nodes and stuff that are worth knowing about. Uh, one is the rig doctor. Um, this is gonna be a pretty common one that you'll see people using to make KinFX rigs, especially when they make them procedurally. This can be handy for doing all kinds of things that involve like cleaning up these joints and sort of setting things up for rigging. Um, it also will, if I hit reorient a child, it'll point down towards the child on each bone on the Z axis. I don't always use this, but sometimes it's handy. The next thing that we need is just to figure out how to skin or in a Houdini terminology capture the geometry with the joints and stuff here. Um, so let's do that. Capturing definitely sounds nicer than skinning. Um, so I will drop a joint capture by Harmonic. And this is a new node, I believe, in Houdini 19 that makes the whole rigging process a lot easier. Because um, you dive in here, you can see this is sort of all these nodes that were required before to capture your joint using this by Harmonic pr process. Um, so I'll go out here and I will uh, plug in the rest geometry, uh, which is gonna be up here. And I'll hit uh, Shift S on the keyboard just to like make this look a little bit nicer. And the capture pose is gonna be here. And the animated pose is also gonna be here. We don't really have an animated pose. We just have the capture pose. You'll see it's doing this weird stuff over here. And this is just a visualization thing but this is sort of giving a hint at like 
the process that, that's going on underneath the hood here. Um, so the biharmonic capture process is really cool. Um, and basically, uh, to sort of simply explain it, um, what we're doing is we are creating like a tetrahedralized version of the mesh. Um, and so that is creating this thing here. And uh, you'll see, because it's made of tetrahedrons, it's actually not just these outside polygons, but it's a whole internal structure of tetrahedrons um, that are sort of coming out from where the actual bones are, the bone capture lines are. So what's going on is it's uh, grabbing the bones, it's doing this bone capture lines thing here. I'll allow editing of content so I can sort of show this more easily. Um, so the bone capture lines is like resampling all the bones basically. And then in this tet conform thingy we have here, um, we can see if we clip the tet mesh, um, like I said, there is all of these tetrahedrons inside and it's all kind of coming out from uh, the bone capture lines. So the um, that's sort of like how it's doing the capturing is it's sort of like uh, searching out from almost like a central nervous system that it's built using this tet conform. And we can change the resolution of this tet conform and you know that may help fix things or make it more accurate or whatever. Um, but, uh, but that's how it's deciding this is the bone that is influencing this part of the skin or, or part of the geo. So uh, super cool system, works really well, doesn't require a whole lot of work sort of doing weight painting out of the box, especially again, if you're someone like me, who's kind of doing more quick and dirty, cartoony, simple characters, um, as opposed to like, you know, really high end realistic animals for feature film or commercials like you'd see you know, uh, big studios working on. So now we have this, you know, version of the mesh that's been skinned and we have all these bone capture attributes and all this good stuff. Um, so what do we do that with that? How can we, how can we test that? Um, so what we can do is we can drop a bone deform and you'll see, we want to just like plug in the same three nodes here. And so bone deform takes in the skinned geometry, the rest skeleton, and then the animated skeleton. Um, so what I can do if I want to test this guy out and animate him or whatever, is put in a rig pose. And this is just sort of a node that lets you um, animate skeletons or pose skeletons or, you know, do all that kind of good stuff that an animator needs to be able to do. Um, so now I can grab one of these joints and I can just directly start moving these around and sort of see what happens. And, you know, this is maybe not ideal the way that this is deforming and, and we can, you know, talk about weight painting and stuff a little bit. Um, but at the same time, what I'm making is a pretty cartoony little character and you know maybe it's fine that he's deforming like that. Another thing worth mentioning is uh, a really great way to fix sort of uh, funky deformations and stuff that you may get in your rigs and stuff from bone deforming and all that, um, which I'm not seeing like a ton of right now, um, is using a delta mush node, which is really, really handy. So I will usually, in order to cheat even more and avoid having to do even more skinning and stuff, um, and like fixing the, you know, capture on my mesh, I will use a delta mush node here and I'll plug in the deformed geometry and again, the reference geometry, and it will kind of help smooth things out. So you can see kind of the difference here. It definitely helps things a bit. And this is a really useful node for character rigging as well as all kinds of other stuff. It can be useful for vellum and point deforming and, and, and all kinds of things like that. So, okay, now we, we want to animate this character. So, you know, we should be good, right? We have the rig pose and we can move the arms around, move the hips and we can move the legs and, you know, pose it however we want. Um, and we can set uh, keyframes so I can grab this guy, set a keyframe on everything. 
you know, move the hip over here and move the leg out here, move that guy and keyframe it. And we have a little animated guy. So we have everything we need to make this animation, right? Definitely not, not quite. Um, we are missing uh, any kind of inverse kinematics IK controls, which is gonna be really important in particular for most characters for animating their feet. So let's go ahead and set that up. And that is really awesome in KinFX as well. So I will drop my rig pose over here. And then what we wanna do is set up IK basically for the feet. Uh, I'm gonna drop an IK chains node. This is where we set up our inverse kinematics. So I can plug our skeleton into here and then plug that into there. And then I need the IK drivers on this side. The IK drivers are going to be the uh, the whole IK chain that I want, basically, for my IK to be set up with. Uh, I want, you know, IK going from this uh, sort of hip here to the foot, and then same for the right leg. So I'm going to use a delete joints sop, um, and I'm going to plug that in over here, um, and I'm going to select the joints that I want to keep. And instead of having delete selected, I'll switch to delete non-selected. And so now we have just the IK drivers that we want, basically. So the next thing that we want to do is I usually just check on enable multi-threading because I assume that will give me some kind of speed boost. And I will hit the root name of one of these. And then the mid name is going to be the knee. It's going to bend and the tip name is going to be the uh, foot that is going to be basically driving all the inverse kinematics and um, i will say match by name because i'm pulling them off the same skeleton and they have the same name so they'll all match up um, and then i will say orient tip and stretch and i will do the same for the other chain as well so root mid and tip, match by name, orient tip, stretch, great. If we move our hip over here, we'll see we got kind of a little thing going on and it'll it'll break kind of quickly. Like if I move, you know, the, the hip over here, um, it's gonna look weird on the knees and stuff. Or if I sort of move them forward like that, the knees are gonna bend in this weird way. And that's because uh, the knee joints over here are being used as pull vector constraints, which are basically saying, you know, bend this IK chain, you know, in this direction. But since the knees are like only over here and not all the way out here, it's not, um, it's sort of like when we, we pull it beyond that, they'll like twist backwards and then they'll start saying, you know, we want to pull this direction instead. Um, because again, the... We put a rig pose over here we'll see you know even if we move this hip over here if we select this rig pose ignore all these errors now the pull vector constraint is back here and it's going to be sort of like pointing the leg in this direction which we don't want so in order to fix this what i do for the legs is i set these to be world space based and then i can move the knee way out here, um, same for this knee over here, it will bend a lot more nicely um, and just kind of in the direction that I want it to, which is cool. And also now I can very easily uh, move the foot and animate the foot and you know plant the foot wherever I want um, and the rest of the joints will kind of move accordingly in the joint chain. Um, and I can rotate it and stuff. I believe because we set it to orient tip. Uh, if we uncheck that, then it will, yeah, just keep pointing forward. So I like the orient tip feature there. Um, the stretch also, you'll see, you know, if it's, if I'm pulling it and we have stretch on, let me turn stretch off on this one, that it will no longer let me kind of stretch the leg out like that. So stretch is kind of a nice feature as well for that reason.